As Thanksgiving knocks on the door, a dark memory is rushing back to me. I don't celebrate this tradition anymore because of what happened two years back. I am a 19-year-old average height girl currently living in California. Your voice My hometown years, is a small town in Georgia. Being an only child, I have always been a pampered kid. My parents were high school lovebirds who immediately got married after finishing high school. My dad owned quite a lot of land. Hence, we were more well off than many people living at the town. He inherited his father's house, and from outside, we were the picture-perfect family in everyone's eyes. But what happened inside the house was only known to us. We lived in the outskirts, right beside vast paddy fields. My dad had a Chevy and often drove us to the market whenever we needed things. Even though everyone thought my parents were perfect for each other, they fought like animals every night. I guess with time, the young love died and harsh reality surfaced for them. My dad screamed at my mother, and she abused him in every way possible. Between the two of them, my mom was the most toxic one, I believe. I saw her slapping my dad and pushing him many times, but my dad never raised a hand at her. Our society has this weird mindset that domestic abuse can only happen one way. I love both my parents equally, but whenever my mom hit my dad and screamed at him using obscene language, I hated her. Increasing toxicity led to the usual consequence, divorce. My dad had to bear a lot as my mom went on giving suicidal threats if he divorced her. It was the most disgusting phase of our lives. Our so-called happy family broke apart and my mom stayed in Georgia and I came to California with my dad. My dad's lawyer proved how she abused him for years and I too sided with my dad on this. Tears rolled down his eyes when he got my custody. But one thing I noticed that day, which no one did, my mom didn't say a single word. She stared at me with a blank face for a few seconds and then quietly walked out of the courtroom. That's not a that mother. That was probably the last time I saw her until I turned 18. And a horrifying tragedy happened last year. My dad didn't keep any contact with my mom after the divorce. That wouldn't. But he never stopped me from being in touch with her. I talked to her over the phone at times, and that was it. Sometimes I missed her, but then I realized those painful nights watching my mom hitting and kicking my dad, and my dad bearing this humiliation and insult for my sake. The awful memories of his past hit him so hard that he was scared to fall in love again. He kept to himself and raised me with the utmost care. It was probably my seventh grade PTA meeting when my dad found a new ray of hope in his life. He fell in love again with my English teacher, Melissa. She was Melissa. a kind lady, and I liked her. They hit it off Red quite well, it. and soon she moved in with us. When my mom found out about this, she was obviously not happy. But this time, she didn't create a scene and quietly disconnected the call. It was a week before Thanksgiving. I was sitting in my room going through some brochures, thinking about where to go for college when my mom called. I picked it up immediately, as it's been a month since I have spoken to her. Hi, Mom. Hello, my pumpkin. How are you? I'm good. Um, Mom? Yes, my dear. Are you all right? I know the time has been hard for you, and trust me, none of us wanted to hurt you. It's just, Dad is happy, and maybe we should all be happy for him. Oh, you are going to be such a lovely lady. I know, Pumpkin, and you're right. Can you please put me on speaker and call your dad? All these years, my parents never spoke after the divorce. My mom Suspicious. never asked for my dad. Hearing her say this, my heartbeat grew faster. I called my dad, and he entered the room along with Melissa. Hello, Daisy. Hi, James. Hope you're in good health. What was it you wanted to talk about? Um, I know I have done you wrong and never apologized for that. Honestly, I was so ashamed that I couldn't. So here I am asking for one last thing from you and my daughter. This Thanksgiving, will you guys visit me? You can also bring Melissa. I would love to meet her. Just give me one more chance to have a good time with my family. I saw my father's face turn cold, and he looked at me, then at Melissa. He was going to say no when Melissa grabbed his hand and said in a low voice, She's Courtney's mom, James. She too deserves to spend Thanksgiving with her daughter. And it has been ten years now, just for a few days. My respect for Melissa grew more that day. As I witnessed her kind heart, my dad kind. agreed, and my mom said from the other side of the phone, "See you all at Thanksgiving then." Hmm. We decided to reach there on the That's day before Thanksgiving. Already. 
Stepping into my hometown, I couldn't help but recall all the childhood memories I made here. The green paddy fields still stood there, making our house the only shelter at the outskirts. But due to poor maintenance, I could see the house losing its usual luster. We knocked on the door, and my mom opened it in one go, like she was waiting right on the other side. Creepy. She hugged me tightly, and then looked at my dad. Hi, James. Please, come in. We stepped in, and I introduced her to Melissa. Surprisingly, my mom went close to her and hugged her as well. My dad and I were both shocked to see her react so calmly. We all sat down and started to talk. My mom served us homemade lemonade, and after a long time, I felt my family was complete. But this feeling didn't last long, as I realized my mom hasn't changed entirely, though. She was constantly bringing up topics involving an incident of their married life and trying to make Melissa feel like an outsider. She went to the kitchen, and my dad started apologizing to Melissa for my mom's mean behavior. I could see them regretting coming here, and I too felt this year's Thanksgiving is not going to be how I expected. I told my dad that we will leave next morning, ASAP. He went to the kitchen, probably to tell my mom not to bring up the past in front of Melissa. I took Melissa to my room to cheer up her mood. Getting our support and attention, Melissa's mood elevated, and we were laughing and talking like before. Ten minutes went by when my mom came in and stopped. She stared at me and Melissa with a cold face and said, Oh, you are here. I was looking for you everywhere. You know, Melissa, my daughter is a sweetheart. She and I spent a huge time decorating this room. She often said how no one can replace me in her life. You know what, Daisy? Your daughter is right. No one can replace a mother. But sadly, you had such a beautiful family, and you ruined it all. Not Melissa wrong. walked out of the room like a badass, and I saw my mom's face turn red. Somehow, Told the truth, she got on. a long-needed lesson, and we all sat down for an awkward Thanksgiving dinner. While having the turkey, I found a wishbone. I decided to split it with my dad. My mom said to me, Be careful what you wish for, and smiled. Honestly, oh, no. I wished what any daughter would. Harmony between my mom and my dad, so that I don't have to choose between them. Somehow, we finished the rest of the dinner and went to bed. It was around 3 a.m. when I heard heavy breath falling on my face. I opened my eyes and saw my mom standing near my bed in the dark. What, oh, the, God. what are you doing here? I shouted in fear. She gave a very bizarre smile and her one eye twitched, making her look creepy. Then she said in a calm voice, I know you wished for our family to be happy again, didn't you, pumpkin? Before I could reply to her question, my eyes went to her hand, and I saw she was holding something on both her hands, and the water was dripping from those things. I jumped to the switchboard on the other side and turned on the light. What have you done? <laughs> you don't have to choose anymore, Pumpkin. Now you will have me by your side forever. What is Thanksgiving without thanking our loved ones for their sacrifice? I am thankful to your father and this bitch for sacrificing their life to reunite a mother to her daughter. <laughs> I couldn't keep my sanity anymore. I picked up the night lamp and hit my psycho mom hard on the head. She wasn't expecting this and fell on the floor screaming in pain. I went on hitting her. Oh my goodness. She took know. away everything from me. And now the one person whom I loved the most, my poor, innocent dad. When I was done with my anger, I called 911 myself. Smeared in my mother's blood, I waited for the cops to arrive. I am the youngest woman prisoner in this high security facility, with a supposed chance of parole, maybe, but I am not going to ask for it. I am going to spend my entire life in this dark cell because I have no one to call family now. The outside world is way scarier than the world inside this prison. And I have had enough. No more family. No more Thanksgiving for me. That goes without saying. Hey guys, I see many of you come. Okay, okay. Okay. Of all things, giving sorry stories, that is just. Just. <laughs> <laughs> messed up in all kinds of ways. It's a sick mom 
and a daughter had killer. Oh man. Jeez. 